Hello friends, in this video we are going to see buoyancy concepts. So this is chapter 4, buoyancy. So in this we are going to see the concept of buoyancy, that is the buoyancy, buoyant force, the center of buoyancy and meta center and also center of gravity. So as you can see on this figure, figure 1.17, buoyant force it is mentioned, buoyant force. So whenever a body or an object is floating on the water, so the two forces are acting. One is buoyant force which is always in the vertically upward direction and weight of the body which is always vertically downward direction that is toward the center of the earth. So in this case you can see the body is floating on the water, the object is floating on the water. So what is the concept of buoyancy? When your buoyant force, when your buoyant force is more than the weight of the body, look at this, look at the magnitude of this buoyant force. This is buoyant force. When this buoyant force is more in magnitude compared to the downward force which is your weight, this force is weight, then the body will be in floating condition. And in this case, your buoyant force is less, you can see. The magnitude of buoyant force is less compared to the weight of the body. Then this will sink. The body will go inside the water. Correct. Now we are going to see in the next slide about the Archimedes principle and more concepts of buoyancy. Archimedes principle. It states that a submerged body is subjected to a vertically upward force. This is very important. Only vertically is not sufficient. You have to say vertically upward force equal to equal to weight of the fluid displaced by the body. Very important. First of all, the direction and magnitude because this is a force. Force must be a vector quantity and so it must be having a magnitude as well as direction. It states that a submerged body is subjected to a vertically upward force equal to weight of the fluid displaced by the body. Before going to this Archimedes principle, I want to explain something here. So, I am drawing a container here. I am drawing a container here. Let us see this is a container containing water and this is the free surface of water. Correct. So, water is present here. So, what I want to explain here. What is the difference between floating? What is the difference between floating? Immersed. Submerged. And then partially submerged. And fully submerged. This is a very important concept to understand. It will help you to solve the numerical. Okay, floating. Floating means very simple. Some part of the body is inside water and some part of the body is inside outside water. Correct. If I am taking this condition, a cubical box here, you can see. So some part of the body is inside water and some part of the body is outside water. So this is floating condition. So how much outside, how much inside? It can be 50-50, it can be 60-40, it can be 1% and 99%. If any part of the body is inside water, then it is called as floating condition. That means some part of the body. Merge means when a body is just touching the surface of water. When a body is just touching the surface of water, that is called submerged condition. Then what is partially submerged? If you look at the uh, rectangular, the first one floating condition, if I am applying a small force F in the upward direction, let us say I am applying a small force F in the upward direction. Okay, uh, not here in floating condition, we will apply to this case. F to this case, submerged case. Okay. If you apply small amount of force in submerged case, what will happen? Some part of the body, submerged body will go outside water. Correct. And then it is called as partially submerged. Then it is called as partially submerged. Then I can also say yes, partially submerged is same as your floating condition. Partially submerged is same as your floating condition. And if you apply a small amount of force in the downward direction to the submerged body, then this body will completely 
be inside the water and in that, that in this case it is called as fully submerged body and which is same as your immersed condition look at this fully submerged is same as immersed condition so mostly we are having three types one is floating immersed and submerged but partially submerged is also known as floating condition very important point and fully submerged is also known as immersed condition okay this is a very very important information i am telling you it is not written anywhere and students are mostly confused so please take care of these points to understand exactly what is given in the problem now we'll start with this now look at this it states that a submerged body right now it is written submerged submerged means it is taking a general case submerged it can be partially submerged it can be fully submerged right like that so when you are saying submerged there are two cases possibility it can be partially submerged or fully submerged in all the cases it is telling archimedes principle it, it states that a body a submerged body is subjected to and vertically upward force which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body this word is very important this word is very important displaced very important please take care displaced by the body correct you can see this cricket ball is here uh, this is not this cricket ball this is just take a ball here and thrust is in the upward direction and gravity is in the downward direction right so you can see this is in balance condition this is in balance condition the thrust force that is buoyancy force is equal to the gravity force right and in this diagram look at this archimedes inside the water so some of the water is displaced you can see it is in floating condition archimedes is in floating condition so some of the water is being displaced by the archimedes look at this so this is the water displaced by the archimedes and archimedes is sitting on the right hand side so what is the meaning here the weight of the archimedes is exactly equal to the water displaced by the archimedes so that is what it is written here on the top also buoyancy or up thrust it is an upward force buoyancy is a force an upward force exerted by the fluid that opposes the weight of a partially or fully immersed object now when you say partially or fully immersed so immersed is 100% hard water when you say fully immersed definitely it's the same thing no need of saying fully immersed immersed means totally inside the water or when you say partially that means 50% is immersed partially immersed means 50% is immersed so immersed is inside water when you are telling some address like something like 50% so 50% is inside the water okay we'll go to the next page center of buoyancy center of buoyancy right so how we can understand this so center of buoyancy cg uh, cb and center of gravity and meta center these three points are very important for this chapter so center of pressure was the point in the chapter number 3 hydrostatic in this chapter there is no link with the center of pressure we will not talk anything about the center of pressure but these three points we will talk in this chapter and very important center of buoyancy the point through which the force of buoyancy is supposed to act very simple definition the point through which the force of buoyancy is supposed to act is called center of buoyancy center of buoyancy will be the center of gravity of fluid displaced or cg of the submerged part of the body in fluid so this is another definition look at this center of buoyancy will be the center of gravity of the fluid displaced or cg of the submerged part of the body in liquid how we can understand center of buoyancy look at this so this is the rectangular body which is in floating condition you can see where is the center of gravity this is the center of gravity written here and this is the point center of gravity right at the center exactly for a regular plane surface or regular body <coughs> then center of buoyancy what is center of buoyancy so when you are going to find out the center of the of the part which is inside water that is called a center of buoyancy whenever you are going to find out the cg of the part which is inside water so you can see the blue color only the blue color you want to find out the center of that particular uh, immersed part that is called center of buoyancy correct so in this case cb will be below the center of gravity now look at this center of gravity and center of buoyancy coincides when the full body is inside water the center of 
buoyancy will be this point as well as center of gravity is also this point. So that is this is partially immersed. And this is fully immersed. Fully immersed, always immersed means always inside the water. Partially immersed means some part is inside water. Now meta center. It is defined as the point at which the line of action of the force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is given a small angular displacement. So you can see there are two diagrams I have taken here. So this is uh, meta center M and center of gravity and buoyancy. Okay, first of all, we'll understand what is meta center, then we'll try to understand. So meta center, to understand the meta center only, we are having this. So this is uh, just a container. You can see the normal axis is there, a container or box which is inside the water, a body which is inside the water in floating condition, right? Then I have applied a small force F here. Look at this. I have applied a small force F. So what will happen? This body will be tilted to some angle, right? Let us let us say this angle is theta here. Let us say this angle is very small and theta angle. Okay. Then what will happen? You can also take the help of this particular second figure also. Same thing it is explaining. Both the figures, same thing it is explaining. So what will happen? Now this part, you can see this part actually here, this part which was inside water, this part which was inside water, now it is outside water and this part which was outside water earlier, now it went inside water. So more water is on the right hand side, more water is there on the right hand side of the axis. So this B point, no, center of buoyancy will shift to the right, center of buoyancy will shift to the right. So what is center of buoyancy? Center of buoyancy is the point through which the buoyancy force will pass. So let us pass a buoyancy force through this point in the vertical upward direction and it will meet the normal axis at some point. That point is known as meta center. Where if you pass a line, vertical line through the buoyancy force, that is, that is the force only and it will intersect the normal axis at some point. That point is called meta center. Same here, G is the center of gravity. V0 is a new center of buoyancy in neutral position. Look at this, B0 is mentioned here and center buoyancy of lifted or tilted ship. So this is the diagram for the ship actually. So in this it is very clear that look at this shaded area I have drawn. So when there is some disturbance or unbalanced force is acting, let us say F is applied here. So what will happen? This body or ship will be tilted in this direction and this angle is called theta. This angle is theta. Okay. This angle is also theta, same. So in this case, uh, you can see the shaded area, right? Shaded area, shaded area. So this shaded area was earlier, this shaded area, left hand side. Yeah, this shaded area on the left hand side, you can see, uh, it, this was earlier inside water. Now it is outside water. If you come to the left, right hand side, this shaded area was earlier outside water. Now it is inside water. So more water is there on the right hand side. More water displaced, I mean displaced on the right hand water right hand side so buoyancy points will shift towards the right so if you draw a buoyancy force line which is vertically upward through that new buoyancy point it will intersect the axis at some point that is called as meta center that is called as meta center and have you seen the pendulum so it is also a point about which a body starts oscillating when it is tilted by a small angle look at this a body starts oscillating when it is tilted by a small angle right this is also one definition of meta center. So now you can look again the definition of meta center. It is defined as the point at which the line of action of the force of buoyancy. One line is line of action of the force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is given a small angular displacement. Okay. So one more concept here metacentric height, the distance mg. Where is mg here written here? Look at this metacentric height, it is mentioned here in the first diagram. Mg. The vertical distance mg, the distance between the meta center of a floating body and the center of gravity of the body is called metacentric height. Okay, we don't have any numerical for metacentric height, just a concept to understand the stability of the floating and immersed body. Okay. Thank you.